So actually, I'm going to take you back even further to 2004. In 2004, um, there was an HIV outbreak in the industry, and uh, it was uh, Darren James um, basically ended up infecting a handful of people. And so Cal OSHA, for the very first time, investigated in the, uh, the adult film industry as an occupational setting as a workplace and said, you know, this is a violation of the bloodborne pathogen standard, that standard in the California Code of Regulations, Title VIII, Section 5193. And um, as a result, a bunch of studios were fined for not providing condoms on set. And then over the course of the next five, six, seven, eight, five years, the, um, many adult film studios were actually fined for not following this existing standard. And just so you know, the standard has been around since in California since 1992, and wow. it's based on a federal and it's based on a federal standard. Okay. So it's it, it's the law throughout the United States, and California implements its own version that has to be equal to or better than the federal standard. If they were to ever go below the federal standard in any, they would lose the money the federal government money for enforcing OSHA in the state. Okay. So, okay. That, now we're in 2009. 2004 and 2009, a law, also ministry attorneys claimed that the bloodborne pathogen standard didn't apply to them was for medical settings, you know, gloves and, and, and dental dams and, you know, full body masks mm -hmm. and things. It didn't make sense for the adult film industry. And Cal OSHA officials kept trying to say to them, no, 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 like, it implies to you when we're referring to condoms. And in the industry would say, well, there's no condoms there. The word condoms don't exist. So it obviously doesn't apply to us. So a healthcare foundation submitted a petition. And the way the petition process works is that there is a voluntary group of people, uh, seven people, they're called the Standards Board, the Occupational Safety and Health Standards Board, OSHSB. They don't get paid. They're nominated, not nominated, they're uh, appointed by the governor of California, and they can hold the position for I don't know how many years, but it's, it's purely voluntary. They do it because, you know, they care about their the workers. Okay. And these seven people, what their job is, is to make recommendations to the actual Cal OSHA people, the people that work for Cal OSHA, enforce the regulation, etc. And so if you want to make any changes to the Cal OSHA regulations, you have to talk to, you have to submit a petition and talk to the standards board. So in 2009, um, AIDS Healthcare Foundation submitted a petition to the standards board and said, hey, can you add the word condom? Can you add the word sexually transmitted infections and make sure that the industry finally knows that the regulations that have been existing since 1992 apply to them? And the board said, yes, we, we vote unanimously that the, that Cal OSHA should look into this and put together some new regular, some additional regulations. So from 2009 all the way until February 18th of 2016, um, and that was a vote, and I'll talk about that in a second. The folks at Cal OSHA, also known as the uh, Division of Occupational Safety and Health, the folks that you met uh, a couple weeks ago, they sat around and they said, okay, well, how do we look at the existing regulations and add specific aspects of the regulations so that the adult film industry knows that they have to they have to provide testing at no cost to the worker, they have to provide treatment if necessary at no cost to the worker, they have to um, provide condoms on set, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, by the way, interrupt me if you ever have any questions. I, again, I told you it's going to be a boring conversation. No, not boring at all. Um, oh, okay, good, good, good. So during that time, one of the requirements is that the folks at Cal OSHA, not the standards board, but the actual Cal OSHA folks, had to hold advisory committee meetings. And what that meant is they had to pick folks that were representative of whoever they're trying to address, in this case, the adult film industry, and kind of sit around a table, open to the public, and discuss how to address those, the requests by the standards board to make sure that the language speaks to the adult film industry. And they held multiple meetings over the course between 2009 and 2016. And I have the minutes of all those meetings. It's a really boring, long read if you want to fall asleep to something. But essentially the conversation was, 
Here's what the federal regulations require, and we can't do anything less than the federal regulation. Okay. And the adult film industry, which in this case, I'll be honest, was essentially Diane Duke, if you, re if you remember who she is. Yes, everyone hated her. Um, yeah, she was basically the only person that was speaking on behalf of the industry. And she would say, I have an idea, why not no condoms? And they said, yeah, see, we can't do that because then we lose our, you know, we have to follow the federal regulations or else we're going to get in big trouble. And the federal regulations say barrier protection. So, Diane Duke, if you have a problem with that, you actually have to go talk to the federal OSHA. But for now, at the state level, we need to figure out a way to, to satisfy the Occupational Safety and Health Standards Board. And therefore, we have to create language that is equal to the existing regulations at the federal level. So condoms are basically always going to be required. That's not really on or off the table. That's part of the existing regulation. But what about testing? What about treatment? What about, you know, this, 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 and this? So that kind of went back and forth for a very long time. And then finally, in 2016, um, the, the Cal OSHA folks put together this proposed standard, and that was called 5193.1. It's not really worth talking about the components of 5193.1 because it did not get enough votes February 18th, 2016, so it did not pass. Okay. As a, re as a result of it, not, the reason why it did not pass, um, there were some concerns that the industry had, and some of those concerns I actually understand, but in order to pass, you need a majority vote, and there are seven members of the standards board. One of those members, a few months earlier, had died in a horrible plane crash. So now there are six members, but for some reason you still need four votes because you need the majority of votes based on seven members. And on the day of the vote, one of the members was on vacation. So we only had five members who actually attended the Occupational Safety and Health Standards Board meeting that day, and we still needed four votes. We got three. So we got the majority of the five, but we didn't get enough for it to pass. Are you still there? Yes, I am. February of 2016, the board voted to not to, to not pass the proposed standard, but they did request that Cal OSHA work with the stakeholders, in this case would be the industry and, you know, the Against Healthcare Foundation to, to address the concerns that the industry had raised. And at the same time, uh, AIDS Healthcare Foundation, the organization I work for, Performer 
requires um, uh, uh, what they call penicillin before they shoot. And then if they do contract chlamydia gonorrhea syphilis, it's prevented before they shoot. Okay. So that's that's what our petition has. That's what their petition has. Okay. As required by law, any petition submitted to the board before the board even votes on it, they have to have the Kalosha folks write an analysis, and the board itself has to write an analysis of the petition. And then after those analyses are written. The board, will, the standards board, will vote, and that vote is taking place August 18th. Okay. And what is very likely going to happen, I, I'm, I would put a lot of my money on this, is that the standards board is going to vote yes on petition 557, AHS petition. They're going to vote yes on petition 560, the Free Speech Coalition petition, and they're going to ask Kalosha to hold advisory meeting. Okay. And here's where you guys come in. Okay. Because usually, it's uh, in the past. In the past, it was a healthcare foundation and Diane Duke of the Free Speech Coalition sitting on these on these advisory committees. And I want the union to sit on the advisory committee. Okay. Because the U- this is about protecting the workers. It's not about protecting the employer. It's about protecting the employee, which is what the union is absolutely based on everything I've read that you guys have written. That's what you guys are focused on, is protecting the worker. Yes. 100%. And yeah. the Free Speech Coalition, as, as much as they fight for free speech, they're not, they don't consist of performers. The people that sit on that board are the producers, directors, 